So when does someone call a coroner? And and what is a coroner death investigator? I'm going to call it a coroner for the episode. That's fine. Okay. What is a coroner? So a coroner is um, an elected position, but... What we do is we go out when someone dies or we're called every time someone dies that lives within our parish. Okay, or county. Uh, Or county. In Louisiana, it's parishes. Um, So we're called if it's a natural case or if it's a homicide, suicide, uh, any of the manners of death. Anytime it's an accident or just your general natural death, it comes to us. Okay. We have to pick up the phone and decide – You know, is this natural causes or is there foul play? We work closely with police. Okay. So the police give you a call. That's right. Yeah. So take me through like an interesting call that's coming in, you know, especially Uh, down there in Louisiana. Dang. Yeah. You know, I knew people that could, you know, they couldn't learn the alphabet and they took their own life. That's right. We see a lot of that. You know, there's a lot of preventable deaths that we can talk about. But, you you know, a typical call in Louisiana is um, anything from heart disease, suicide, OD, um, but to, to be more specific, um, we've had many that they find a body floating in the bayou mm. and that can be different, you know, because they've been exposed to water. So, you know, they may be bloated more. Some of the, the surface evidence or the trace evidence that we use is not there because they've been floating. You can see where turtles and, and other animals in the water have nipped at them. Oh yeah. Um, so it can be somewhat gruesome and then hard to tell, you know, why are they in this water? You know, they're dressed in regular street clothes. They right. weren't, you know, they, they weren't, weren't swimming. They weren't swimming, they weren't fishing, and they're in the water. Um sometimes people OD and their friends have no clue what to do with them, so they throw them into the bayou. Yeah. Um sometimes these guys are just, you know, hanging out and they slip and fall and hit their head or they pass out you know we don't always know what got them to the bayou now how do those bodies look if you roll up on a body because i've always wanted to find a deceased body i think a lot of people have bucket list of mine i see them every day but i've never rolled up on one yeah 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 um that is why is that a bucket list thing for people i don't know but it happens often i had a guy cutting the grass at a a rent house and found a body god Um, and did he get any intel or he just got lucky? No, he just got lucky. He was cutting grass and boom, he found that body. A lot of times if you work and stay focused and you keep working towards, I mean, you know, it's better than some lazy dude who's doing nothing finding a body. Right. At least that guy's out there right. doing something. Well, when that lazy person finds a body, you got a question. How'd you find this body? <laughs> True, right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, yeah, had, point. we had one recently that was just a, a driver was passing by and there was a lady in the ditch. Now, what was interesting was her arms were removed. She was a Mexican female. Damn, that's so, interesting. So they huh? removed her arms because of her tattoos. So this was a oh the killer. This dude. was a hit job, correct? And they didn't want her identified, you know. So they see this in a ditch and they call us, and then we got to figure out well where's the arms, <laughs> you know? Mm. So um, there's interesting cases like that where people just you know they right time right place and they find bodies. And so you so, so, did you roll up on that scene with no arms? Yes. Yes. So when you get there, what's going on? Like, are people milling around? Is somebody, you know, like, what's the scene like when you roll up on it? Well, in that regard, there's no families present. You know, um, it's different than most. You know, it's a lot of sheriffs uh, standing around looking at the dead body. Now, we have jurisdiction on that body, and legally they're not supposed to touch that body until we get there. Okay. So, of course, I would get there, look at the scene, You know, to try to find out, does she have family around here? What's she doing in this area? She's not from here. Um, They'll do an investigation. The law enforcement will do an investigation on their part. And then I'll start looking at the body for obvious signs of foul play. And in this regard, she had no arms. So we knew something wasn't right. And it wasn't like an alligator or an animal came out and removed her arms. This was intentional. Wow. You know, so in that case, we would get them to an autopsy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had a guy find a foot once. It was from a from a uh, fatality, mm-hmm. but they called me, and this was, you know, weeks later. Hey, we found a foot. Would you come pick it up? They don't want to touch it even, you know. So I throw a bag in my car and I go grab a foot. It's 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 a different lifestyle, you know. <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> yeah, you know, if I get pulled over, yeah, you know, carrying anything, uh, yeah, man, I got a foot in my car. Yeah, bro. I got a 10 and a half in the trunk. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Dude, that's wild, man. Yeah, that's interesting. And do you put that foot in the trunk? You put it in the back seat? What do you do? Yeah, well, in that case, I figured it would be pretty 
pretty gnarly, so I actually brought a disposable ice chest and packed it in there and then got it to the funeral home that uh, they brought her body to. Um, she may have been sent to cremation, but uh, either way, the funeral home would take care of that body part. You know? Okay. And I've traveled with, with worse. I, you know, in Louisiana, it doesn't snow often. Mm -mm. Um, they had a, we had a case years ago where there was an infant death. And the autopsy place is in um, – the autopsy place is about an hour and a half away from our, where we live. Okay. Or where we work in our parish. So um, they had a baby that had passed away. And they asked, hey, it was snowing really bad. Hey, can you meet us halfway with this child? And I'm in my personal car. I'm like, sure. So the baby, of course, is in a body bag. Yeah. Um, so I'm driving down the highway with a – with a baby in my And how car. big is that body bag? I mean, it's like a gallon or something. How big well, it's, you know, it's like a duffel bag for okay. a baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, you, again, you get pulled over, and I, I have an unmarked car. I'm in street clothes or normally scrubs. And, oh, you know, yeah. What are you carrying? Uh, At least you're not in a Miata or something. Yeah, That'd yeah. That'd be the worst, bro. You get pulled over in a Miata, and you got a baby <laughs> in a duffel bag, bro. Well, I kind of I kind of went over the speed limit just to kind of maybe, <laughs> maybe man, if I could only get pulled over here, you know, uh, it would be an interesting case. But, oh, that'd be fascinating. But, no, you know, it, it, it's sad for when we lose babies like that. But the, the fact of the matter is the baby needed to go to autopsy, mm. and we'll do anything we can. To, to assist in that regard. And if it meant driving through the snow 30, 45 minutes, you know, we'll do that. Yeah. That's uh, some of the things that we do to, to help. So I was called to one case where the deputies said, um, this one's, uh, this case is unusual. We'd like you to come out. And so then I go out and they had noticed some blood dripping on the floor, on mm -hmm. the floor, blood stains. Out of the body? Just in no, just on the floor. Okay, that's so, all they'd noticed. Right, they saw that, and then the body was an adult male on a couch. Okay. Um. So I walk into the house, and I mean, we're we're reading everything the minute we get on scene. Even even you know what friends and family are there. How do they look? Who's their neighbors? Uh, what area they live in? So I walk into the house, and this was kind of in the country. And uh, the first thing I see is he had Mickey's malt liquor memorabilia everywhere mm. so i said okay okay i like this guy's style you know yeah, he's a yeah. middle-aged guy yeah he's a cap of sig probably <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i'm looking at that and then i asked the detectives to show me the, you know, the where the, the blood stains are well I, I go and i look and there were some cobwebs over the door so i could tell that that home hadn't that that area of the house hadn't been used okay just from the cobwebs and stuff okay there. but when i opened the fridge there was an intact hawk's head in the fridge mm -hmm. with fur on it. Ooh. I mean, that's odd, you know? And, yeah. and then, so then I look in the oven and the guy's making cracklings in an oven. Mm. Now, if you've ever made cracklings, you know, you're stirring those in grease. When you're baking cracklings on a Tuesday night and you save the hog's head to make hog's head cheese later, you're going to definitely have heart disease. You yeah. know, there's no foul play here, fellas. And that blood probably came when he was moving the hog's head from the kitchen to the, I mean, from the counter to the refrigerator. Oh, from the actual hog, you think? Yeah, yeah, wow. absolutely. So, you know, again. Damn, that's when you're on your last limb for a snack, man. I <laughs> talk mean, you about, know? Yeah. That's crazy, When you bro. bake in cracklings, bro, you're going to have high cholesterol at a minimum. <sighs> uh, but, you know, again, the blood stains triggered the, the law enforcement to, to call and, uh, the fridge told me the story. Yeah. As well as the, the way the guy lived. He smoked cigarettes. He had, you know, alcohol everywhere. Um, and Papa was a rolling stone. You yeah. know, he, he, that environment told me, you know, the, what was going on with him. Right. It gave you a lot of clues right there. Now, say if you pull up on like, let's go back to that water body, right? Right. What happens to a body when it's in water? Because I think Sometimes a lot of people fantasize. That's one of the fantasies. I'm going to find a body. You right. know? It's either in the woods by the interstate or I'm going to walk down by a creek bank and there's going to be a body right there. I think that's some of the general fantasy of humans. Mm -hmm. um, what does that body realistically look like, depending on how long it's been in? Yeah, so, you know, it bloats. You get a lot of bloating in the water. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole body puffs up. Uh, normally the tongue protrudes out. Ooh, uh, you don't think about that. The gases and the the gases and, and the decomposure, you know, the bodies sink and then they rise when when the gases start to, to fill up the body, and that's when we find them. A lot of times they'll be snagged in a in branches on a bayou or in a river, um, but that body's going to bloat a lot. And then again, turtles and other animals out in the water will start pecking at them. So um, it looks a little bit more traumatic than it, than it is. Um, but if we're unsure, we can always send a, that body to autopsy to try to determine 
exactly what happened. And they'll take them apart. And a lot of times they'll, they'll cut into their heart and realize, well, this guy had a massive heart attack. I see. You know, so there was no foul play. Or he's full of drugs and there's no external trauma. So nobody hit him in the back of the head um, and threw him in there. Mm. Yeah, maybe pull up a little water bloat for us. Ooh. Yeah, so that's, you know, uh, you what, can find anything the online these days. That dude looks like a Simpsons character, huh? <laughs> he does. Sorry to say that. I feel bad. It's a human being. Mm. Um, oh, my gosh. Dude. Well, so we go from looking pretty healthy to not healthy pretty how, pretty quickly. I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah, and, you know, especially in Louisiana. It's oh, so hot and so humid, and you'd just be amazed at at. at People that live with no electricity. Oh, bro. If you leave a baby in the yard for 30 minutes, bro, I'd have algae on one side. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's, um, it's just like that. Nature really reigns supreme down there. It really does. Um, and then some people are just really hardcore on drugs. You know, we had a house one time that it, in the kitchen, there was a piece of plywood. And when the officer slid the plywood back, that's where they were using the restroom. They were shitting in a hole in the kitchen and then they would cover it up. Mm -mm. with a piece of wood and i mean that's that that's pretty hardcore in your home but that's you'll see Vietnamese that. too really <laughs> you'll see that you know with people that just abuse drugs to the point of you know they're living in condemned homes or but i got called one time and the guy was still alive they were doing cpr and he had a heartbeat so i walked um, as i'm walking up to the house i see the families i see their posture change like you know, oh shit the coroner's here it's not good and, you know, so I walk in and uh, the paramedic says, we got a heart rate. And I'm like, he's not dead yet. Who called me? <laughs> so I, I immediately walk out and I wave at the family and that guy's still alive today. And you can imagine them saying, you were so sick. Wow. <laughs> the coroner came, <laughs> you know, um, those are, you know. We see crazy things. Uh, one lady was told to put jelly. She had a really bad infection. Mm -hmm. She was putting jelly uh, between her legs. Okay. And somebody said, put some jelly on it. Well, she was rubbing. Like what you mean, like uh, Smuckers or something? Well, that's what she was using. Okay. Normally, it would be more of a KY jelly or something for that. And they, her legs were purple. And it was like, what, what's going on here? And uh, her, her neighbor said, you know, well, she was putting jelly on it. And it's like, wait, what? You were using smoker? That's the wrong kind of jelly. But, you know, um, we've seen wedding rings around penises. It's like, man, how'd you even get that on really? there? Yeah. Just, wow. That I must have been. That's a big promise. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Um, you know, we see bizarre things like that that people do. Um, Autoerotic deaths are actually very dangerous. We, we actually get a, not a lot, but enough of them. And that's where people are pleasuring themselves and also hang themselves? Yeah, they, they're starving their body of oxygen. You know? Okay. I mean, when, when doing that, you need a spotter because it's so common for people to die yeah. when they're doing that. So, um, Well, yeah. shit, if you got a spotter, you don't even need to do it uh -huh. usually. Well, it depends. But yeah, I guess, yeah, people's into different stuff and people are artistic. Well, people, you know, bad things can happen in that regard. Um, it, just bizarre, bizarre things. Now, uh, back to the, we were talking about animals. I had a call from police and they weren't sure, they didn't see a gun, but it appeared that someone had, uh, there was foul play based on the, the, the face and of the, of the decedent. Okay. And that was just rodents, you know, mm. that had gotten into Rats. the home. Yeah. yeah. So it looked, you know, suspicious of a homicide, you know, so. But um, enough rats get in there. That's right. So we can get out there and say, no, no, this is, you know, we'll, we'll still send an autopsy to be sure in some, in some uh, cases, but. They'll make a cheese out of anything, huh? That's that right. post mortadella. That's right. That's right. Other crazy cases are uh, anal insertions. It's like what people. And what are people um, doing it for? For pleasure. Oh, okay. You know, we would see that a lot in the ER, but I had a case where the guy obviously didn't want to go to the ER. And so he had had a hammer and it was using the backside of a hammer to put in his buttocks. Right. Right. Mm. And that can perforate your colon and then you get really septic. Yeah. So, you know, th things like that. Um, Damn. That's I was, crazy. you know, um, an in another interesting case would be um, huffing where people use keyboard cleaner to oh, get yeah. high. And m those deaths occur in parking lots of stores. Most frequently you're going to find a huffer in the parking lot at Walmart. Oh, because they get out and get right they, into that yeah, can. They get, and, and I, so I had one guy, um, actually a veteran, mm -hmm. 
And that's how he would stop his nightmares. It was the only thing that worked. Oh. And so law enforcement's on scene, and they're like, we can't find any drugs, but there's air cans everywhere. You know, and that's dangerous. The worst is when you think you're doing like huffing like one of those things, and you actually get one of those horns. Yeah, I can imagine. That's oh. a wake up call. Huh? Oh yeah, dude, that's a de- that's the Lord trying to say, "Hey, look, Bubba, yeah, time to stop." Yeah, I'm gonna rescue you real quick, Daddy. You know, cause that's the worst, man. You ever found somebody hiding somewhere real neat, like, or somebody died during hide and go seek or something? Uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, there was a guy under a house once, you know, and uh, you know, no clothes on. Mm, I wouldn't per- like that part. Yeah, naked under a house eating popsicles oh yeah yeah yeah. i mean that you know that's uh that's different yeah yeah that's a different way to do it pcp you know that that makes you makes you a bit crazy um but you know truck drivers we get truck driver deaths a lot they're from out of state why why do you get truck driver deaths a lot well not a lot but we get them we have truck stops and a lot of times they'll pull over and look truck drivers aren't healthy i mean they're big guys because they drive all day long yeah and uh you know, sometimes I'll I'll get called out and I'll be in somebody's truck. I've never been in a truck driver's truck before until I started doing this. And mm-hmm. I'm looking at how they live and, um, you know, they, they notify their parents by, by their family by phone. And so, the you know, maybe the wife's flying in to get his personal belongings and the truck's full of condoms. And it's uh, like, oh, man, I don't want this wife coming into his truck. So, you know, hey, can we throw this stuff out You know, before the wife gets there? Yeah, give him a, give him a little... You know, dude. I, I don't want the family's last thoughts to, yeah, you know, so there are, there are, uh, different cases and different positions that we're in for sure. Um, it's, it's just, it's an interesting job and, you know, um, I'm very sympathetic and compassionate when I'm, you know, we, we all get faster as we work, we get faster at things we do, you know, True. we learn how to do them faster. Mm-hmm. And um, every once in a while, I have to stop and remind myself to, to slow down and to make eye contact with that family and, and to be really compassionate, you know? And, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the nature of everything, I think. Once you get in the flow of something too much, you know? Yeah, you do it too fast. Yeah. And you don't stop to, you know, maybe spend that extra time with them to reassure them that, you know, that their family's taken care of. So, yeah. Um, 